Joined now by Fianna Fáil's spokesperson for agriculture, Charlie McConnellogue. Uh, Charlie, thanks for joining us. Um, Charlie, um, one suggestion to the ongoing fodder shortage situation has been the implementation of a meal voucher system. Is that something that you think the government should be looking at? Uh, do you think that's a realistic solution? Yeah, I, good, good afternoon. Good morning, Claire. I'm looking forward to the, the next couple of days, and there's a great atmosphere around here this morning. Um, I think it's something that uh, definitely needs to be considered. What uh, we are calling for is a hardship fund um, and uh, to cover issues such as uh, meal and farmers that are under particular financial pressure over the months that are ahead. I think there's a real difficulty on farms at the moment with liquidity and with, with finances. Many are carrying a lot of uh, merchant debt from the very difficult year we've had, even going back to the fodder crisis we had last spring. And if you look at it, out of the last five years now, we've had two years out of the five where there's been a fodder crisis, and then you throw in on top of that the fact that we had the unprecedented drought, which we've just emerged from over the last number of weeks. Um, and this is sort of the first time, I would say, that in my, in my memory, certainly, that we've ever been talking about a fodder crisis in advance of the, win the winter. So that certainly means that farmers are going to be under immense financial pressure. And I believe that uh, Fianna Fáil believe that there, there needs to be a two-pronged approach from the minister to that. First of all, we need to ensure that we see a loan scheme actually specifically developed for him or by, by the government under the SBCI at low interest rate in order to assist farmers with the, the with credit, with dealing with existing merchant debt and was, was also with the pressures that they're going to be experiencing over the months ahead. And then the benefit of that would be it's, if, it's, if it's guaranteed through the SBCI, the interest rates would be low, but also it means that banks can be assured in providing credit maybe to people who otherwise would struggle to, to, to get it because banks may be more difficult to deal with. And secondly as well, there will be some farmers who will need actual direct support, whether in the form of meal vouchers um, or other support, and we believe there needs to be a hardship fund put in place to actually assist farmers in that category because undoubtedly as we go into the winter um, there's going to be uh, a lot of pressure on farmers and we need to see the Minister in the budget and over the coming weeks ensure that the support is there for them. Because this is an issue now that we're going to have to face on a, on a long term basis by the looks of things uh, with climate change, our changing weather patterns, that's all tied into the fodder situation that we're in at the moment. So are there, it's long, the hardship fund that you're suggesting, is that a long-term solution or is it a short-term solution, uh, an immediate more reaction to the situation that farmers find themselves in? I think what we're talking about is something to actually reflect the immediacy of the problem and it's reasonably pretty much unprecedented what we're facing into over the, over the coming months. So there needs to be specific help there for those. But also then we do need to look at there being a, a, financial, or a crisis reserve fund put in place on a permanent basis. And th there is the option under the Rural Development Programme um, for there to be an under cap, for there to be a, a crisis reserve fund um, as part of the, of the overall cap suite, common agricultural policy suite. And other countries across Europe have actually opted for that. Um, and I think uh, the, our government didn't, but I think we were remiss in that. And uh, it's important that whenever you are facing into crisis, and they, can, they don't necessarily have to be fodder related, um, but that there is, um, and it can be, for example, of crop failure, etc., um, that there is actually a fund in place which can be accessed and assist farmers in, that, in their time of need. And that's an, an important tool. And really, the government, do as part of the next CAP programme, will be seeking that actually that will be put in place on a permanent basis. And another issue you've been campaigning strongly on, Charlie, is the uh, suckler payment, calls for a suckler payment. Um, do you, uh, effectively that would be a, a coupled payment. Uh, do you really think that that would be a sustainable solution to the sector? Like when you think of the optics of it, do you think that that would be offering a payment to the sector is a sustainable solution? Well, I think when you look at the benefit and the suckler, the suckler sector underpins uh, farming in a lot of, lots of parts of the country, and in many parts of the country, it's the most suited, suited, suited uh, farming model. Um, but unfortunately, in recent years, people in beef farming and in suckler farming have found it exceptionally difficult to make a profit. And indeed, um, when, in many cases, their net income on farms have been less than what the net, um, the, the overall payments, European payments might be. So it's important, and what we're seeing as a result of that is many farmers actually reducing their size of their herds and getting, 
and getting getting out of looking at getting out of farming. So it's it's crucial that actually we do move to ensure that the sector is under, underpinned and that we don't see uh, land being uh, uh, underutilised and people not farming uh, to the optimum in certain parts of the country. And to, the key part in doing that is ensuring that there are margins there for those who are actually um, in beef farming and suckler farming. And in order to achieve that, uh, we think it's exceptionally important that there is a payment. We've got a motion before the Dáil Clare um, in, in uh, April of this year, which was supported by all parties and independents apart from the government, um, seeking that we would work towards a €200 Euro, uh, payment per cow. Um, and I think unless we can achieve that over the coming period, we're going to see more people actually leaving the sector. Charlie, there is some speculation out there that you know, we could be facing a snap election before Christmas. Um, if you were appointed Minister for Agriculture, what would you hope to achieve in your first 100 days? Well, I think the, the, one of the first things would be to address the, the crisis that's facing farmers over the winter and to ensure that the financial support is in place um, for, uh, for, the farm, for farming families to actually meet the, ch the financial challenges they're going to have over the winter. Another key thing which would need to be done immediately and uh, the Minister for Agriculture needs to do immediately is call the Beef Forum and hold the factories to account so that we don't see prices pulled and advantage taken of the extra stock that are coming out in the market over the coming weeks in a way that isn't reflected in other parts of Europe. And another key thing which we would immediately move to do is to actually move towards providing additional support to the beef sector to ensure that farmers can actually get a, a financial return. And with Brexit looming over the beef sector as well, the challenges are, are huge coming down the track. Uh, there's so much talk about diversifying into other new markets, but the potential of actually securing those markets in the short term is, is a big challenge. What kind of practical measures do you think should be put in place immediately to protect the beef sector? Well, I, I think first of all, and I think the government haven't really uh, been as proactive as they should have been in terms of looking to develop the existing markets we have by resourcing board BIA further to actually expand. But having said that, it is a slow burner. I'll bet the fact the government have not uh, exploited it in the way they should have. Um, board BIA, for example, didn't get additional resources to put additional feet in the ground in those markets, and that's key to actually driving product into them. I think we need to see the government actually front up and, and, and be open about the measures they're taking in relation to uh, mitigating against the risks. It's very much been under the surface. Um, they haven't been clear in terms of what their plan is. Um, and I think we, we only today, uh, we're hearing that there's, there's, there's sanction going to be sought for 450 additional customs officers and veterinary officers. Um, and that's happening now just with six months from the deadline. Um, when potentially we could be facing a hard Brexit, uh, leaving a minimal amount of time to actually train those officers in to ensure that they are in place given uh, if we do face the worst case scenario. But I, th I think overall, naturally our objective has to be working with Michelle Barnier and the European uh, team to try and ensure that uh, a good outcome is achieved and that the key issues are teased out um, and, uh, and we, we achieve a soft Brexit because there's no doubt that if, it, if, if there isn't a deal coming out of it, um, there's going to be a very severe impact to the agriculture sector and we saw a report from the Central Bank today as well, for example, indicating that were that to happen, it would uh, see an, uh, 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 up to 10% of farmers leaving uh, the agricultural sector. So a good deal is absolutely key um, and has to be the number one objective. Outside of that though, we need to see the, the, the government be a lot more clear in terms of teasing out the issues with the farming community um, as to how they can be mitigated and also uh, providing the funds to actually support them to achieve, uh, to, to mitigate those risks. And you know, I've been very vocal in relation to the 25 million euro loan fund which Minister Creed announced in the budget last year. Um, which still hasn't been delivered uh, inexplicably so almost a year later and when you, when, you, when you have a government that's saying you know have confidence in us to actually deal with Brexit um, and the massive job of that is not being able to actually deliver something which is a very specific project it certainly would give you a cause for concern and it's not, a, it's not an acceptable performance. We'll leave it there Charlie, we're out of time, thanks very much for that and now we're off to Niall who is over at the True.